So today, let me show you guys a web server vulnerability scanner you can use right in Kali Linux. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And in this video, we'll be diving into the world of web application security testing and exploring one of the most popular web server scanners called Nick2. And it was developed by CIRT. Uh, Nick2 is like one of the most powerful open source tools that allow you to scan web servers for vulnerabilities and security issues. And I've actually done some testing with it using my own domains or web servers that I have out there, but it's a must have tool for any security professional or anyone interested in getting into uh, web application security. And throughout this tutorial, I'll cover how to install Nikto uh, if it's not installed, but it comes pre-installed on Kali Linux, but also how to use it to scan a web server and a few examples of how it can be used for pen testing. So let's get started. All right, so I'm at CIRT.net and this is the Nikto page for the application we want to look at today. And as you can see, there's a lot of information on the website. And of course, I'll always have the link down in the description of the video. But one thing I want to really focus on is the features down here. You can check these out for yourself. Uh, SSL support, uh, HTT proxy support. It has a lot of features that are included with this. But I want to show you guys under the documentation. So I'm going to go to the documentation, which is the wiki under their GitHub page. But it gives you a, a great overview of everything. Now it says Nick2 is an open source web server scanner which performs comprehensive tests against web servers for multiple items. So it's a whole bunch of things that it checks for. It checks for outdated uh, versions of software on the server, um, 6700 potential dangerous files and programs, uh, and it also uh, covers version specific problems on over 270 types of servers. And so this is essentially a automated tool for cybersecurity professionals to check if a site is vulnerable to any of these issues. And here's the goals down here. This is mainly what I want to focus on. The goal of this project is to examine a web server to find potential problems and security vulnerabilities, including server and software misconfiguration, default files and programs, insecure files and programs, outdated server, servers and programs, uh, pointers to lead a human tech tester to better manual testing. So let's go down and hop over to our virtual machine so I can show you guys how to use Nick2. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, cool. So I'm logged into my virtual machine. This is Kali 22. Uh, just showing you guys. But uh, if you go into here under search, you can search for Nick2. Uh, it's in there as an application it has this little alien head. You'll see this. But it's basically going to open up the terminal. So I'll open it up so you guys can see. But it will basically run... Uh, the first command I wanted to show you guys is Nick2-H, and this basically gives you all the options while scanning a host. Uh, so you can go through this, uh, figure out what you want to use based on what you want to use it, but I'm going to give you guys a couple uh, ways of running it. It's not too in-depth, but it'll give you a base understanding of how to actually use the tool. Now, let's go down to clear so I can so you guys can see it at the top and I might zoom in. Let's see, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see exactly the commands that I'm typing. And so let's run the Nick to help again, uh, dash H, uh, just to show you guys again, but go through those options, uh, figure out what you're gonna do uh, or what you need for the options. Like for instance, I'm gonna show you guys the SSL uh, that forces to only use the SSL port. But let's start off with just showing you guys the basic command. And I've already ran it. So as you can see, like in my history, uh, that's popping up. I've ran the command once because it takes a while. I know it takes a while. 
um, depending on how depth you in scan you scan or whatever but the basic way of running is just get a domain um, don't put like HTTPS just go on and put the domain name in there and this will scan that server for you and of course do this on something you have permissions to do it on because the scan is kind of in-depth and it looks at a lot of details of the server uh, which this is my server so I'm not concerned about it and like I said this is mainly just to find vulnerabilities of a web server so let's go on and press uh, enter so I can run it and as you can see it'll go through and start scanning that server using all those different plugins and tools that it has along with the server and we can start off here at the top but the IP address you know that's the IP address of my server that's the host name so keep it uh, the target port uh, 80 and as you can see it's still scanning uh, but it starts that it gives you a start time you know all that information and then also what is scanning on the server and I kind of go through a few of these things but uh, it pulls the version of Apache that you have and as you can see it's running on Ubuntu it knows that you know just by information that it's gathering from the server using those various tools that it uses and it gives you you know a lot of information as well as links to go check out like for instance the uh, anti-click jacking x-frame option header is not present so you can check that out to get some information of that uh, the x content type options header is not set this could allow a user agent to render uh, the content of the site in a different fashion uh, to the mean type and there's a link with the information on that and actually let's go to it let's hit the control button that'll allow us to click something and open it up and as you can see it'll open it up, open up that uh, vulnerability uh, right there but it it gives you information about it you know what I'm saying uh, let's see Invicti uh, detected a missing content type header which means that the website could be at risk of a meme uh, sniffing attack so um, like I said it gives you all the information so you can figure out what you want to do as far as um, checking for vulnerabilities or seeing what you could do to mitigate these vulnerabilities so um, and like I said this thing will run for a minute so I'm gonna let it run uh, but yeah you can see right here it it even checks to see what version you have and see if it's outdated or not and which my version of Apache is outdated but that is the most stable version of Apache uh, from Ubuntu's repository but and it's always gonna be behind and so right there it says current is at least Apache 2.4.54 and then right here it says Apache 2.2.34 is the end of life for the 2.x branch so that gives you somewhat of an attack vector there as well uh, by it being out of date so that's if it's out of date but I'm gonna let this thing run and I'll show you guys the results. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Oh, and one thing I wanted to show you guys, I forgot to show you guys, but uh, right here is the redirect. And the reason I know it redirects because I set it up that way. I set up my Apache server that way. So it's even pulling in that uh, it redirects to this, uh, the secure site. Uh, so if any time anybody uh, types in keepitechy.com, you know, the HTTP, uh, version of the site uh, port 80 is gonna redirect to port 443 so I'll be back when it finishes well you know what I won't let this run um, since we got that information that it redirects to the HTTPS site let's go on cancel and run it using the SSL option I just wanted to show you guys that so so if we ran it this way but we know that it redirects the http site so or s site secure site so http s colon four slash four slash so keep it and then we want to force the scans to only look at the server uh from a secure standpoint so let's go down and press enter and that's another option just wanted to show you guys but as you can see it pulls in even more information and so it does make sense to cancel it sometimes depending on what it's looking at or the server as you see things uh, happen or the results from the previous scan you can adjust based on that and as you can see now it's only looking at port 443 
uh, it pulled the SSL information. So keep it uh, the subject, the cipher, the data was issued. As you can see, let's encrypt, <laughs> which is what I use on that server. Let's encrypt, uh, which allows it to automatically, uh, update the search on the server. I think I did a video showing you guys how to do that, but, and then you got your store time again, and then it's going through and checking this server again. So I'll actually let this one go through. Uh, so we see everything that it pulls up about this server. All right, check this out. The scan is complete. And uh, a lot of videos I've seen in the past on this tool, they don't really go through and show you everything because it does take a while to actually run all these different scans on the web server. So they'll kind of cancel it or whatever. And I just wanted to show you guys the full results of what actually uh, pops up. But like I said earlier, there are a whole bunch of links that it gives you based on uh, what appears to be something that could be a vulnerability. So you gotta do your research and figure it out. Like right here, server may leak inodes via e-tag, header found with file, and then inodes, whatever. So you can click here on this link. And I think I did that on the other one, but just click on the link so you can look at it and see exactly what it is. And this is a vulnerability uh, ID and it just kind of covers everything about it. So uh, won't go through that, but I just wanted to at least show you guys that. And then uh, check this out. It says the content encoding header is set to D flat, which may mean that the server is vulnerable to the breach attack. So check this out. Let's click on that, pull that up. So this is a breach attack. And so you check this out. This gives you some information about the breach attack. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can do your research, you know, uh, figure out what's vulnerable or what, what direction you want to take, you know, based on the information that it gives you. And then also I've seen something in here about the CSS uh, file. Uh, one thing about this tool, it give you things to actually look at. Like, for instance, it says this might be interesting the css directory so that's one of the directories on there and then the image directory is there it says directory indexing found um and then this covers the amount of requests that it did uh 11 items reported so that's all these things that were reported up here and then the amount of time it took and let's see how long did it take oh it took about an hour or so about 50 minutes or so i just let it run i went and made me some coffee you know what I'm saying? Came back so I could show you guys exactly, you know, everything it reports on when it comes to the system. And so let me show you guys another way of scanning. Uh, based on the information I got, like you could, you could just do this same scan using the IP address. So uh, let's copy the text that's selected and then go down and run a command again. But this time I'm gonna back off this SSL. I'm gonna just drop in the IP address. I'm just showing you guys uh, that this is an option for you to run it and I'm not going to let it run the whole time but as you can see it'll run that same scan using IP address so some servers or web servers out here don't have domain names associated with them they'll it'll just be an IP address if you find it uh, via whatever scans or information gathering method that you use so you use that IP address to run those scans as well so I'm gonna go down and cancel this because uh, it's looking at port 80 you know what I'm saying but let me show you guys another way of doing it. And this is a way to like scan multiple domain names. So um, the easiest way to do it is to put them in a text file. And so what I would type is I would create a file. So nano uh, in this directory, in my home directory, that's fine. And let's just uh, name it uh, nodes or something. The nodes that we want to look at or you could put websites whatever you want to put i'm gonna just do that uh dot txt press enter go in here and then we can list out whatever domains that we want to run so uh run the scan again so let's say you you know don't want to sit here and wait you want to just get feed the tool a bunch of different domains then you could put them in a text file like this so kits I know another domain that I own is kitpro.us. Uh, so let's go on and save that as well. Boom. And then let's go down and run uh, the kit to the knit to command against that text file. So all we got to do is write uh, knit to dash H. I'm going to back this uh, IP address off, but all you got to do is specify that, the, that uh, text file and press enter. 
and it'll go through and look at both of those domains for you. So keep it techy. And then once it finishes that one, it'll move on to the next one. And I won't wait around and show you guys that, but that's exactly what it will do. It will go through and look at both of those uh, nodes that we have in that text file. Now, one last thing I want to do is show you guys uh, how to output your stuff to, let's say, a text file or something. Or you can use like a CSV or whatever you want to use. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a couple different options of formats that you can export it to. You can export it to a SQL uh, file, you know, text file, like I said, uh, CSV. But I'll just show you guys the CSV format, which will apply to all of them. Well, actually, um, the text one is super simple. Uh, let me show you guys this right fast. So let's run that same command. So keep it techie.com and dash O for output. And then we can output it to a text file. So I'm going to do scan.txt. That'll output it to that scan.txt file. And I'm going to cancel it. Uh, and then ls this directory so you guys can see uh, what I'm talking about. So it'll output everything from the to that scan file it also display everything but it'll output it there as well in case you need it for something else and then also like i was saying you can do it in other formats so let's say you want to put in a csv if you guys know what csv is kind of like a database so our excel style format uh using like commas to separate everything uh so you can do scan.csv and then all you gotta do is specify the format if it's not a text file you want to specify the format uh so Nick2 will know how to, and I spelled it wrong, but Nick2 will know how to export the file or what format to put it in uh, in order to export it to that file type. So let's go down, press enter, boom, it'll go through and do it as well. I'm gonna cancel, uh, ls that directory, and boom, you'll see they got a scan CSV. And then let's cat that out. Let's cat out the scan uh, text first, press enter. As you can see, it's that same information that you know popped up in the terminal and then also in the csv format you'll see it it has those commas in there uh, as well as the quotes you know that's csv format and you can specify that when you open it up in excel or calc whichever one you're using and that's it for my Nikto tutorial. And I hope you found it informative and learned something new about web application security testing. Now remember, Nick2 is just one of the tools in your arsenal of web application security tools, but it's a very powerful one. So make sure to use it responsibly and always get permission from the website owner before scanning their website. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go on and like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techie.